Hi, this is Rochelle with Journal Life's Journey, and I have a listing in the Journal Life's Journey Etsy shop of a set of 100 backing pages. I've printed those backing pages four to a page just to kind of give you a look at the different colors and designs that are available. This set includes 10 patterns, 10 colors, it's in horizontal orientation there will be a vertical version coming and a lot of these you can use in either orientation as well you can use these backing pages to back single-sided scrapbook papers and digital designs or use them as scrapbook papers to create elements in your paper projects you can use them in a number of different ways they are colorful they're not really light and faint like a typical backing page would be, but a lot of them, depending on which design you pick, can still be written on and it's visible. I tried to do a rainbow of colors, so we're just gonna go through and look at the different colors and patterns. So you have a like receipt text. I'm not gonna I'm gonna show you the patterns on this first on these first few pages and along with the colors, and then I'll just show you the colors because the patterns will repeat. So you have like this um, receipt style. This is a floral pattern. This is the striped pattern. This is just a grungy look. Then we have the grid. And again, remember this is one quarter of the size. So this would, if I printed it the full page, it would have filled up the full page. I'm gonna show you a version of the full page as well. So the grid, another stripe, the white stripe, you got the Harlequin and polka dots. Then this next one, this was the yellowish color. This one has ledger paper and lined paper. And then the patterns repeat with the different colors. So this is like the red pink version. This is what it looks like. Then this goes into the orange. So I did a rainbow of colors. So no matter what uh, papers you're working with, you'll have a backing paper that should work well with that paper. I also threw in some neutrals just in case, but this is the green. And these are a little bright, so I may make another version that's a little more pastel and light. Let me know if you would be interested in that. This is the blue. Then we get into the blue and purple or indigo. I don't know if I call that indigo or purple. I think this is the indigo because this is going to be what I'm calling the purple. And I printed these on 32 pound paper. And then this is another pinky version. It's a little different from the original red. See the difference there? So it's kind of like another pinky purple version. Fuchsia maybe would be a better term. And then we get into the vintage look. So this is the brown. And then we get into the gray starts here. So the gray and the vintage. So if all else fails, you always have the gray versions to to use. And so that is it. Again, that is a hundred pages of backing sheets, 10 different patterns, 10 different colors. So check it out. So I went ahead and I printed the blue, which is this. Okay. I printed the blue full size. So I'm going to show you what that looks like at full size. So I did print these double sided. This is the floral. And I just use cardstock from Walmart. I'll try to put it on the screen so you can see what I'm using. This is the back. I use an HP printer to print these. I'll put my printer in the description box below so you can see what printer I use. Here is the text and the script. There is the dark stripe. This is the light stripe and the polka dots. This is the grid, Harlequin, Ledger, 
and aligned. So I had some questions about how I put together the flip-flop journal. So, and it was mentioned that I didn't give enough measurements. I'm gonna do it again, put the pages together again, kind of like I did in the original video, which I'll link in the iCard up above. Also in that video, I linked to a couple other tutorials that I actually followed. Um, so that may be a little more helpful to you as well using the 12 by 12 paper. I'm gonna do this using the eight and a half by 11 paper. It kind of turns out to be the same thing, only we're an inch shorter on the width. I'm gonna keep the height at eight and a half, and then I'm going to put the pages together just like I did for the original. I just need to pick which pages I want to use. And I think I only need three. I want to use this one and I'll save these two to make something else with because I don't think I need all of them. Now I just kind of want to decide my placement, how I want my pages to flow. I would really prefer for this to be on the front. I don't know if it's going to work out that way because I don't want to think about it too hard. <laughs> so the planar pages will be on the back. All right, so let's put this together the same way I did before. I'm going to attach these papers with some double-sided tape so that I'll just have one long strip. Okay, so I'm gonna use this tape. So I think I'm gonna put this one over this one. I don't think it really matters that much, but let's do this. So you're gonna need three pieces of paper or cardstock, depending on how heavyweight you want your flip-flop journal to be. And originally these were made with envelopes, but if you don't have junk mail envelopes or don't want to use the envelopes, this is an alternative. And I know a lot of us have those paper pads, lots of paper, um, scrapbook papers. I know I do. So this is another good way to use that up which was what I did with my Halloween version. I use my 12 by 12 paper pad. Okay. So that's gonna go like that. Probably should use the card smaller. Then I'm just gonna burnish down that tape. And I'm gonna get my mat out so I can use the lines the grid to help me line up my paper so i'm just going to line my paper up on the lines on one of the lines and the tape is about a quarter of an inch so i'm just going to peel back let's start at the bottom it's closer to me i can see it better and get the paper lined up and you can use a little wet glue to help with this, help get everything lined up so that the double-sided tape doesn't stick instantly while you're trying to line everything up. I'm gonna press that down and bring the tape up. So that should be fairly straight now. Let's burnish it down. And the next one, let's line it up on a line. And then I'm gonna line this up. On the line next to it, cause that's a quarter inch. Let's get this straight. Press that down. Oop. Well, that's not good. Let's start this again. All right, let's try that again. All right. I pressed down too, too tight. Okay. So now we got all three pieces put together. Now on my other one, I think, let's look at it. So it's easier for me to just kind of look at mine and see what I did. Um, I'm trying to remember how many pieces of paper I used. 
I think I might have added a fourth paper on this. I'm not going to go back and look because I'm just going to do it the way that I want to do it this time. But what I did, once I connected the papers, I decided how wide I wanted my journal to be. And then I scored my papers that width. So I think I did about four and a half on this. Yes, I did four and a half. And that gives you kind of a traveler's notebook size style on the inside. This one, I think I'm going to do a little different and I might end up adding another page to it. I think I'm going to make it five inches instead of four and a half. So that it'll be a little wider. Let's do five inches. And if we need to add another piece, we can. So I'm going to start on this end, get my scoreboard. You can do this with a ruler and your bone folder or a ruler and a stylus. I got little sticky notes sticking everywhere. I'm gonna have to turn it upside down. All right, so I'm gonna put my paper on here. Do I want it to have a little tuck spot on the front? Okay, this is what I'm gonna do. I hope this works. I'm gonna score it too, because I'm gonna want this to fold over and tuck. So it's gonna give me a sturdy edge. Yes, two inches. Now, if you didn't want that, you would just score at five. So then I'm gonna go over five inches, so that would be seven. And let's see what we get with that first before we go any further. So I hope this comes out right. So that's gonna go like that. And then that's gonna go like that. Okay, so that's going to be my front. When you open it up, it's going to be a journal here. I might put an envelope out here. That may be what I make with the extra paper. So now I need to score at five again. Let's make sure we got everything lined up. So I'm scoring at five inches. You score at whatever width you want yours to be. I could have done five and a half that would cut down on some of the trimming I have to do, but I didn't want it to be quite that wide. Then I'm going to go again, flip it over, score at five. Oops. And of course you can do this with any paper you want to use. Now, this is a little tricky because it's so close to the seam. I was hoping it wouldn't be that close to the seam, but it is. But we're gonna score still at five, just ignoring that that seam is there. Hopefully the tape will make it hold up and any embellishments that we put over it will also hold it in place. So let's fold that back. Now, so far we're gonna be making one, two, this will be three, four, five inserts. I'm going to keep going. Do this last one. Score at five. If you want fewer inserts, then you then put together fewer pages or smaller pages, or you can trim it off because every fold will have an insert in it. All right. So this goes like this and we only have this little teeny bit left. So I can either cut that off or leave it. So this, we'll decide what we want to do with it in a moment. All right, so this is our base of our flip-flop journal. This will be the front. This will be a tuck spot. There will be an insert here, a journal here, papers here stitched in. Then when we flip over, we'll have some stitched in here. You can have some types of embellishments on these parts of the pages stitched in here. So how many is that? One, two, three. Then this would close like this. I got to decide what I'm going to do with that excess. I'll probably just cut that off. Then it flips this way. This is the new front. It flips this way. The journal goes here. So that's four, five, and then that's it. So five inserts for this one. Now let's see. I wish this was a little bit longer. I'm just going to trim it off. 
I'm just going to trim it off. Uh, let me mark it with a pencil where I want to cut so we don't want any mistakes. I think that's about a half an inch. It's a little less than a half inch. So let's take that off. So it's just a hair under half an inch. And then that's three eight and a half by 11 pieces of paper. So now all I need to do is put together my inserts, my embellishments and everything for the pages. And I'm all set to go. I can make this pocket as well. And then I can make my envelope if I want to envelope on the front, do all of that. And we're all set. So that is how you can make a flip flop journal using eight and a half by 11 paper. And again, as I mentioned, I did use 12 by 12 papers before, but I essentially cut it down to eight and a half in height. I think I started out with nine and then I cut it down to eight and a half because I liked it better at the smaller size. But it's basically the same concept. You add papers together, make it as long as you want to get as many folds as you want, because each fold will hold a set of pages, will hold a signature. So I hope that explains it. I hope that gives better measurements and makes more sense. Again, this is the type of project that you can make it whatever you want, make it the size that you want. I could have gone even smaller, maybe made it five by seven. Um, and if you would be interested in seeing how that would work, let me know in the comments and we can try it out. But that is it for now. Don't forget to go over to my Etsy shop at Journal Life's Journey to check out this listing, the backing pages, 100 pages. It's an excellent deal. Let me know what you think in the comments below and I'll holler at y'all next time. Bye.